Jada Pickett Smith claims to have tried Jesus, and unfortunately, much like the situation with Will Smith, it did not work out according to plan. In in your book, again, it's amazing how much you open up. The whole thesis is about worthiness, worthy, mm -hmm. becoming worthy, owning your worthiness. You talked about, I think it was like you met with all the shamans, all the nuns, all the priests. <laughs> all like the you priests. went through uh, every, <laughs> any every... any spiritual leader you could find, any yes. practice, any philosophy anything. you tried. It. Yeah. Anything. This is the this is the water bottle meme that Gunger so brilliantly put. Religion is just a bunch of different water bottles, and you're just trying to find the one that works for you, mm -hmm. right? And so she's like, I tried all of them. I tried everything: the priest, the this, the that, the that, right? Instead of saying like, Did you really approach Jesus on his terms, or did you approach Jesus on your terms? Right? Because if you approach Jesus on, on his terms, then you really have to take inventory of where are his claims true, yes or no? Are his claims true, yes or no? And and then you have to deal with those versus like Jesus is another water bottle in the bag of water bottles and you're trying to find whichever one has the ribbon on it. Any philosophy anything, you try to. Yeah. Anything. From all those, you know, workshops and exercises and one on one conversations. And moon ceremonies. Yes. And, and howling at the moon, whatever it is you're doing, <laughs> you know. What was the biggest awakening for you with all those experiences? What was the, the reoccurring theme that kept kind of whispering or speaking to you as a reminder of what you needed to know or hear? I knew that there was a higher power. I knew that. I didn't have... I mean, James says that, like, even the demons believe that there's one God and they tremble. So th that doesn't say anything to me. Like, okay, great, you're not an atheist. Okay, like, that's that's the bare minimal you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like all right cool like she's like i came to the conclusion that that there's a higher power okay mm -hmm. we get it there's a higher power okay now listen to what she says next the relate i was like i just needed to figure out how to get access to it i know it's there how to get access to it now i don't want to ascribe intent but it almost reminds me of the story in acts where they see the power of the holy spirit and then the sorcerer asks how he can buy it mm -hmm. right like let me get i want this thing Oof. instead of like instead of getting access to it sir it serves you how do you serve the higher power mm. right instead of it being a utilitarian how do i get this to benefit me let me serve it because it is the source of all wisdom knowledge and truth right god is the source of all of them. so yeah it's just it's just it's just a very it's a little it's a it's a western i am the center of the universe the world revolves around me and therefore i need this to serve me instead of serving god it's it's go ahead it's it's, you know, it's, it's very common though this sort of language is very common study the bible for three i'm talking about backwards and forwards really? i studied it from a historical uh -huh. point of view I studied from, as a theologian, I studied, I tried. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Jaded the, the, the theologian. I studied, I, I put on my theologian hat. She started, from, she, she, why do I not believe her? I opened up Got Questions. I, I opened up L Lagos and I, I got into the Greek. Did she, did she? I did the Bible study by Zach Windall. Right? <laughs> like what is, what do you mean you studied it backwards and forwards? I don't, listen, I don't know anybody that's, studies the Bible backwards and forwards <laughs> from a historical point of view and put on your theologian hat and comes to these conclusions about the, the universe and, and the world. Yeah, she did maybe a book. And is this the hyperbole that like most celebrities talk with? It's gotta be. It's gotta be that 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 Will Smith hyperbole, the Jada Pinkett Smith hyperbole. Ugh. Yeah, maybe she did though. Go ahead. Maybe she's finding those like the mysticism of Christianity, which I'm still into. Sure. Of, co of course, of course, you're still into the mist, the, the the new age aspect of. Of course, you're still into that. <laughs> I was like, but I don't know God. Wow. Like I don't have a personal relationship with God. Like I'm not God. I'm not feeling you. You didn't feel like connection. Oh. I didn't... oh. Darkness. I'm not. This that way. It's a feeling. feeling you. Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> Didn't feel the connection. I understood how where Islam was created, <laughs> Judaism, Christianity, Sufism, Sikhism, you name it. All because I there's love a, it. There's a difference between knowledge and like application of truth. Mm -hmm. So you can know the origins of all the world religions. That's not that's not saying much, but it doesn't mean you know the truth. And it doesn't mean you're taking the truth and approaching Jesus on his terms and not on your terms. Religion anyway. But I was like that that knowledge wasn't giving me the connection there's a difference in the intellect understanding the theories understanding how things are developed 
versus being immersed and absorbed in that spiritual energy that you feel held mm. and you feel that you know God is with you. What is she saying? This is what she. This is what she's saying. This is no. no you, you guys are missing it. Okay, this is what you guys got to understand. What is she saying is the same thing that so many Christians are seeking of. They need certainty. They need to know, and they need to feel. I don't see that being promised in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. I don't see a certainty being promised, though there's one verse I think I could think of of Luke where he writes about these things I've written, so you may be certain, right, of the historical events. Yeah. I don't see a knowing, and I don't see, uh, what was the last thing? Certainty, knowing, and feeling, mm. right? The, the whole point of following Jesus is you lay down your life. He who lays down his life gains it. He who loses his life gains it. So th this, but this, but this is prevalent in Christian circles, Yikes. right? You need, because faith is not one faith is not certainty. So some of you guys are, are confused and you think that you need certainty. You don't need certainty. What you need is faith. Faith is a confidence spectrum. I have enough faith that Jesus is who he says he is, and the Bible is reliable. I have enough confidence in that that I'm willing to follow it. And because I'm willing to follow it, over time, God shows himself through his hand in my life, through answered prayers, through just the way he's orchestrated, the way I, I do things his way, even though I want to do things my way. But when I do things his way, things align. That even if I fall and fail and I struggle and I suffer, things still work out, right? And so... This idea of certainty, certainty comes in hindsight. Certainty comes after following Jesus and being confident and placing my faith in him that in hindsight, I look back and I'm certain that Jesus is who he says he is. Uh, but, but, but initially, it's just a leap of confidence, right? A leap of faith. It's, a, it's not a blind faith because there's enough there to believe it. And then the second thing is this, this knowing, this knowledge, this consistent pursuit of I need to know. You don't need to know. You want to know, and there's nothing wrong with knowing, but it's the same deceptive thing that happened to Eve in the knowledge, you uh, in the garden. You will know the, the difference between good and evil and be like God. It's 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 Gnosticism. It's a desire to be all-knowing. All, I, I need all information. And the, and the third is the feeling. Now you got to feel. What, what if God doesn't give you emotional mountaintop moments? Or what if you have an emotional mountaintop moment once or twice at the beginning of your a journey and, and, and he kind of allows that to happen so you have that jolt but then he that, 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 that's not there to sustain you the what's there to sustain sustain you is you pressing into jesus and continuing to walk with jesus and over the long haul the relationship is less of mountain high i'm overcome by some weird energy which sounds awfully demonic if i'm going to be honest with you but it's more of a subtle whisper like it's like the truth is quiet because when the truth is the truth, it doesn't need to yell at you and scream at you, and you need to fall on the floor and convulse and have all these experiences, right? Mm. And so I think what she's getting at, unfortunately, is a lot of the folks who deconstructed, deconstructed for these exact reasons, certainty, knowledge, and feeling, right? The, the feeling of I don't affirm people and they don't like me and I don't want to be liked, mm. right? Th th this is so spot on what where a lot of our and this stuff is not promised to us in the scripture. I don't know who lied to her that these things are, which again frames this as this is really about you. This ain't about God. This ain't about Jesus. This ain't about a pursuit. It's about you and what you feel like and what you want. You feel a sense of peace. You feel peace and you feel like I don't have to do this alone. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do this alone. And on top of that, there's so much more going on here than I could even imagine. Right. You know what I mean? And the, okay, God, I'm going to put my trust and my faith in you. It took me till I was 40. Wow. Hopefully that's helpful to you guys. I think that might save a lot of you guys some, some heartache. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years 
to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.